Hey friends, it's Tracy. Welcome to today's video. I have some neutral spring and Easter DIYs to share with you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The wood cutout bunny is from the Dollar Tree. The plastic tile is one I picked up from Family Dollar. Now this frame is made just like this. I got it on clearance at Hobby Lobby during their clearance sale. So for the bunny, I just uh, turned over the plastic tile and then take my time and trace it out. Uh, since this bunny has a little, you know, notches, I just take my time and cut it out and it looks really, really nice. So uh, what I'm going to do is give this bunny a uh, two coats of plaster color Waverly chalk paint. Uh, this is just my favorite color that I like to use for my projects. And then once that is dry, then I take my uh, brown color. Now this is uh, milk chocolate and no, actually it's espresso. It's espresso. And I just take a, a palette knife. I just think I picked up a set of these at the Dollar Tree. And so I'm just taking my time and just going through and kind of hitting the high points and just giving it a, a rustic chippy look. Now, once all of that is dry, I'm taking my Distress Ink in Vintage Photo and just going in giving it, roughing, roughening it up just to, you know, uh, give some distressing to that white paint. To give my bunny some height, I'm using some of these larger tumbling tower blocks. I picked up this set from Five Below. Then uh, for background, I also found this beautiful cardstock. It is from Hobby Lobby. I got it uh, when it, they were doing their clearance sale. And so what I'm doing is just measuring it uh, so that I can cut it off out with my cutter and uh, that way it will you know fit nicely in the back of the uh, of the frame now this is a 12 by 12 which I cut down and the frame is a little bit larger than that so I'm okay with it so because I'm going to use some Excelsior at the bottom to cover that up and to adhere the paper I just use my adhesive tape glider if that is something you're interested in and uh, you can get it in the craft store or I do have it listed in my Amazon shop. So to uh, get my bunny to stick on to my frame, I just use a combination of E6000 glue as well as hot glue. Uh, I don't mix them together. Usually I go around. I put the E6000 first and then I go around it with the hot glue uh, so that the E6000 is the permanent hold and then the hot glue is the instant hold and to cover up the bottom to kind of mask that part where the paper didn't fit I'm just using some fine excelsior that I get from the craft store and just putting that in the bottom and you know positioning it the way that I like all right so then I pulled out a 20 millimeter a split ball. Now this is going to be his nose and so I'm using a uh, cashew to give that a color uh, for the nose. Now uh, for the whiskers I pulled out some sisal twine as well as my stiffy uh, fabric stiffener. Now this is a liquid and so I just cut pieces of the sisal twine and then I just put them in the uh, stiffener. Uh, um, I do have some gloves that I, because it is messy and it gets all over my hands, so I just kind of cut it and just soak it and just spread it out on some parchment paper to let it dry. And then I just glued everything down. Uh, I just, it just really kind of, it didn't make it really, really stiff. It just uh, made the whiskers formed where they would stick out straight that they would that they are not curled like they were on the roll and so then I just glued everything down and then glued the uh, nose right there in the center then I just took my scissors and just trimmed off each of the whiskers uh, I wanted them to stick out a little bit more and that stiffy helped me accomplish that because they it helped you know them stay straight so they wouldn't curl like a roll does on the on the uh, rope all right so then these are the ribbons and trims that I'm using just to make a small bow for my bunny's ear and I'm just using some different ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby I'm also using some uh, coffee stained cheesecloth I have some 
uh, ribbon and trims. Like I say, I, you know, I pick up ribbons and trims at either at Hobby Lobby or usually at Walmart. And so then I just uh, make the bow the way that I want. And then I'm going to glue that there right at the top of the ear, just so like that. Now for the flowers, I found these cherry blossoms over at the Dollar Tree. And so I just cut off a few of those stems and then just stuck it in the bottom of the uh, Excelsior. That Excelsior, it gives a bit of whimsy and it also adds like, you know, a filler for me to stick things in. And uh, yes, it just come out, this came out very nice. I'm very happy with it and it looks very high end. I know some may say Tracy what are you thinking at those orange and white gingham carrots are the cutest and yes they are but during the pandemic several years ago when everything was shut down included Hobby Lobby and when they opened back up they had tons of Easter stuff so I snagged several of these packages of carrots for dirt cheap so I needed to find something else to do with them because I already have them you know in my orange and white and actual you know Easter decor so I wanted to make some high-end burlap carrots so that's what I'm doing I'm using some of these orange and white gingham carrots so guys what I did is I gave them a coat of sandstone chalk paint and just one coat real uh, you know good coverage did very well and so then I have this quarter full uh, burlap ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby and it has the uh, wire on the ends so I didn't want that because it made that look like a band so I took off or cut off the edges of the wire and so then I am just gl hot gluing it down uh, just just as I get it, you know, around the carrot. For the rustic rope that's wrapped around my carrots, I have this sisal twine also from Hobby Lobby. I just stick it there in the top, then wrap it around, just giving it a dot of hot glue as I go around just to keep it in place. Now for the green tops of the carrots, the greenery also came from Hobby Lobby. I just cut off sprigs of that and hot glued it right there in the top. That fits very nicely in there. Now for a bow, I am just uh, taking some muslin fabric, just strips of that, as well as some ivory trim, as well as some uh, burlap. Uh, most all of this came from Hobby Lobby or either Walmart. So I cut uh, the burlap just uh, as just a strip of it so that it would just sit right up and underneath there I just glued it right there to the top and then uh, for the trim and the muslin fabric I just made uh, it to wrap around at the neck of the carrot where the greenery part is and then uh, I also did a hemp cord or like jewel recording uh, I make uh, a small bow with that I love all the different textures together and just love how all these high-end rustic carrots turned out
friends. If you are new to me, my name is Tracy and I love to share crafty ideas with a bit of rustic country charm. I have tons of videos on my channel and I love to share seasonal crafts. I love to paint. I love to do wreaths. I love to take this and make it out of it. Out of it. I love my happy dots, my paint splatters, my torn edges. I'm a bit old school with my paint splatters. I love my black Sharpie marker. And as I mentioned, if you are looking for something in particular click that magnifying glass there on my channel type in whatever you're looking for and any video that I've done should pop up uh, in a list and you can go through and maybe find something that you're interested in I would love to have you as a subscriber and become part of my channel I'm using another one of the wood forms from Dollar Tree and some spackle to cover in the hole at the top. Uh, I decided not to use that paper mache cross on this particular project. So for the brown undercoat, uh, that is going to be the uh, crackle that comes through. I'm using uh, Espresso, which is a Deco Art Americana color. So once that paint was dry, I am just putting a pretty good coat of school glue all over my bunny and I let this dry um, till almost completely dry and then what I did is I gave it a coat of plaster color chalk paint and then the magic happens and so what I find is uh, when I'm using the school glue the thicker I get it in areas and don't let it dry quite as long as I do the actual crackle medium I get a better crackle so this is still a work in progress so I just kind of want to share my tips uh, along the way as I discover uh, working with school glue and getting this beautiful crackle okay so then um, I have this also this little box which is a little sign from the Dollar Tree also and then I have this uh, cardstock now I got this pack on sale on clearance at Hobby Lobby recently and so I'm just picking out the one that I want and then I measure out uh, the sides uh, on each the front and the back as well as the sides of the small box and then I just use my trimmer to trim down the paper to the size then I'm just using my adhesive tape glider which is uh, double-sided tape and that is what works really good for me just to get everything uh, attached to the box uh, I, I said like I said I did do the front and the back because once I attach my bunny to the back you can see part of that so I wanted to make sure that I have all of the sides covered now I am taking my distress ink in vintage photo this is my favorite color and just a finger dauber and just going around the sides and the outside of the box just to enhance it just to give it some definition then I also do the same thing with the bunny around the outline I just go around and just add some uh, distressing ink just as a shading to my bunny just to kind of bring it out a bit more then then I take my uh, fine Sharpie marker which is in the color brown and so I'm just doing a little bit of doodling all the way around the outline of the bunny now I like this uh, look because it is just something that that is what makes my country crafts and so uh, I appreciate you being here and letting me know how much you are inspired by my crafts you are a blessing to me and I thank the Lord every single day for my true craft uh, my true crafty friends that are here for the right reasons thank you so very much all right so now then what I do to attach my box is I'm just using e6000 as well as hot glue and then just attach the box there uh, in the front so then I pulled out some neutral uh, greenery and just some flowers some little cherry blossoms I have some styrofoam that I've cut down and just put it inside the box now in that box it has that little bitty uh, just a little bitty square of things I just pop that out uh, because that was in my way and so I have some lambs ear here I just 
you know, stuck that in. And I like to add some styrofoam to my box uh, because it really kind of helps me with my florals and my greenery and that kind of things. So I also have some pit berries and these beautiful flowers are cherry blossoms from the Dollar Tree. I also have, as I mentioned, some pit berries, some lamb's ear. I also have some small uh, greenery with white flowers that came from Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Dollar Tree, Hobby Lobby. That's usually where I get the majority of my florals. And keeping with the neutral theme, I just added a little bit of uh, shading in the inner part of the ear as well as on the cheeks just to enhance it a bit. I didn't put a face, a nose, eyes, or anything like that, which one certainly could, but I just wanted to uh, just kind of give it just a little highlight uh, and I love the way that this look I kind of paired it here with some uh, battery operated lights from the Dollar Tree and everything just looks so nice and pretty and perfect for spring. You can make cute little planters using some recycled items just like this tin can. Now what I did is I gave it a couple of coats of sandstone chalk paint. I find that chalk paint sticks very well to tin cans. And so the burlap ribbon that I'm using is this beautiful quarter full burlap ribbon that I picked up uh, from Hobby Lobby. And if you can find it on sale, that's an even better deal. And so what I did guys is I just hot glued it there to the uh, can and then uh, just wrapped it around. Hot glue sticks are very nice to this. As I said, I love to use chalk paint and this is one of the reasons because it sticks very well to metal and glass and all that kind of thing. And I can glue my ribbon there and don't have any issues. So the uh, part of the ribbon that is sticking up, I'm just hot gluing that down over the top of the can so that it looks very nice and finished. And so this is how it looks just like this. So what I'm uh, doing for the actual like trim, now this uh, burlap trim came from the Dollar Tree and so I'm just hot gluing it around. Uh, I usually start where the crease is in the back and then I kind of meet it up so that everything, it looks nice and uh, all just kind of ties in together. Now, so for a stand for this particular one, what I have are three 20 millimeter uh, balls, uh, just wood balls, wood beads, wood beads. And um, I just have them from a pack that, you know, I've, I've probably purchased off of Amazon. And so I just glue them uh, to the bottom of the pan, uh, pan, uh, pan <laughs> the bottom of the can, uh, my little planter, just like in a triangle. And I use uh, E6000 as well as hot glue just to give me the permanent hole with the E6000 and then the instant hole with the hot glue. So for the second can, what I'm using is one of these candlesticks uh, out of a pack from Hobby Lobby. And then I'm doing my favorite uh, method of putting some stain on this little wood item just with my antique wax and to attach that uh, candlestick to the bottom of the can. I'm just using E6000 as well as hot glue uh, just to stick it there in the middle and then this gives me a little riser for this planter and I love the way that these turn out. You could just pair them with all kind of different fun spring things, uh, just greenery, just really make them fit your decor and just without breaking the pocketbook. Here are some more videos that you may be interested in watching. I appreciate you being here. Have a great day. God bless you and we'll see you in the next video.